Hello crafters, this is Anna with Passions of Paper. I just got the kids down for bed. Hubby is watching TV with some uh, Bluetooth speakers or headphones. So it is quiet out there and I should not be getting any interruptions. interruptions. So this should be a good time to do tutorial number two. Um, so in this one I will be showing you how to make this little grungy booklet here. This is a lot of fun to make, super grungy and vintage, and it's pretty simple, and I'll just be showing you. Um, some stuff I'll have to do off camera because it does take time to do some of the things, um, and I don't want to waste you guys' time. Just want to teach you basically how it's made. So right here you can see I've got a little charm. I just pick whatever charm I'm in the mood for, um, and birds are... Uh, are a special thing for me. I used to own a crimson bellied conure and she was taken away from me too young. Um, so I have a special place in my heart for birds because of that. Um, I did an A here for Anna and that just that's basically a handmade button type of thing and then I just use a little uh, a brad to hold that in there. All right, and I make the string really long because I love how it looks being wound all the way around. But of course, your journal, your uh, your booklet, your preference. So that's just how I do it, and it is a little annoying having so much string, but it just looks so cool wound like that. So that's why I do it. So I did a little cluster here, and I just use a word, and this one ended up being hope. Uh, on the outside here, this is just a printed piece of paper on thick cardstock, the thickest that my, my printer can handle. It's, uh, I think, 110 pounds. And um, this, um, this digital here is from Manu Design Studio on Etsy. And that's how it looks. So I'll be making another one of these and showing you how to put all that together. Here we've got some muslin that's been strongly coffee dyed. I didn't do anything to the back. And then on the inside I have these book pages from Vintage... Oh, what are they called? These Vintage National Geographic magazines. I got a stack of them for a dollar and they're just loaded with great vintage pictures. Um, so I find a full size picture and um, I'll, I'll tear around the outsides of the full size picture and then I tear it down the middle and I create a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back. And it's it just feels really nice because it's that vintage paper. It's still sturdy enough that I don't have to back it, it's just a simple pocket. And I do it so that the way that it's torn, you can see it right here sticking out all around the border. Um, there, That's just from that pocket. I love the look of pages sticking out. So that's the back pocket. So the pockets add a lot to that and then the pages themselves also add to that. In here, I've just got some ephemera I made from, um, oh, where's that page? Elaine Design. She makes this, uh, grungy vintage stuff. It's, um, there's, it's, I think it was a kit I got. There's buttons that you see here. That's how I make my buttons. And then there, there's just plain pages that you can literally make anything you can imagine out of. And then she does tags and pockets and envelopes and stuff too, but I just used the plain pages and the buttons. So I made these as little cards I can pull out and write on the back of to-do lists and things like that as I need to use them. And then here's my pages. They have, for the most part, they have torn edges sticking out because that gives it a nice weathered used journal look. And then I go through and I use my grungy stamps. I have a little bucket of grungy stamps, all different kinds, and I just go through and stamp the pages. 
Um, these pages have all been coffee dyed, some of them a couple of times, and I do extra splatters and stuff on them as well. I've got a rusted paper clip. I have a couple of those in here, and I've done a couple of clusters. Now this is a booklet, not a whole journal, so it's meant to be small, just a few pages. Here I use a vintage photo, it's a real vintage photo, as a tuck spot, so you can put stuff back behind there. And then in the center of the signature, I've got the strings from sewing the signature in, and I made two paper beads that have been coffee dyed and inked, and um, on the ends of the the paper beads are four wooden beads. So it's nice and lightweight. And here we've got another cluster. I just added a few beads to it. I wanted something really small so it doesn't puff the journal out too much. This paper here you can see got a little too cooked so this part right here might end up coming off. But that adds to the character of the paper. I love it. So here's another rusted paper clip. If you want to learn about how to rust things, there are videos on YouTube already for that. So I will not be including that in here. I'm trying to make this a pretty quick tutorial on how to make this booklet. Not every little thing that's in the booklet. Uh, there's another cluster. And then I really loved this from the, the uh, Vintage National Geographic magazine. So I just glued that onto the whole page for myself because this is my, my personal booklet. Now I'll be uh, making another one with you guys. As you see, I just kind of go crazy tying it wherever or making it go around wherever. And then once the string gets too short to go around again, then you just go around that. I'm sorry, I hope I'm staying in frame. I'm getting like really close to the camera. Um, but you'll see me do it all. We're going to build one from scratch now. I've already tried to get all the stuff out that I'll need so I can quickly grab things and make this as fast as possible. Ugh. And I'll probably be sitting down and crafting, so hopefully my head does not fill up the camera. So I'm just going to be cutting off these white edges. This is a 12 by 12 page. And um, sometimes I print it so it fills up the whole page and then it cuts some of the bottom and the top off. But for the booklets, I don't want them to be a full size page. So this 12 by 12 paper is actually perfect for a little booklet to insert into a journal. All right. Um, keep these. You're going to be wanting those for the, one of the future steps. Alright, so what I do here, I grunge this up. I take an X-Acto knife and I go along the edges of the paper and I grunge it. I hate, I hate perfect, perfectly cut edges, so I always try to get rid of them. I could have torn it, but the problem with that is then sometimes you tear into the white and then you've got little bits of white sticking out. Or I'm going too far into the booklet and that's going to affect the pockets on the inside. So I don't like to tear these ones. This does do a little bit of tearing, sometimes accidentally. Like you can see right here, it made a little notch. It's a tiny one. Sometimes I've made bigger notches. I welcome that because it makes each journal cover, each booklet cover, unique. And I love unique. So, see, I'm making some of that come off. I'll go around later and just kind of pull stuff to help add to it if this doesn't feel like it's getting it, getting it rough enough. See that? That's great. I love that. Don't want it to go too far. This is about as far as I'd want that to go. But I definitely welcome those types of things. It is kind of messy, so typically I do this sitting over my trash can. Or I'm sitting down, I'm pulling this over the trash can. 
um, but for the sake of the camera, I got to do it up here. So I'll have to take some time to clean up the mess. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now I just go through and try to clean all those little tiny pieces off because otherwise it's going to get stuck to my inker, my dauber. Once I go through and start daubing. Alright, give me one second while I take the time to clean up my workspace. Alright, so that's all clean. Oops. Now I'm going to use this uh, solution that I made to do the inking. This is made from coffee, um, instant coffee, water, and these two reinkers, Vintage Photo and Ground Espresso, to get to the kind of brown, the color brown that I wanted. Um, and it lasts quite a while. I just use a regular little dauber. I use the jar. Um, this soaks up a lot, so I use this to squeegee it out and then pull it off real fast and that way it gets some of the extra liquid off and leaves me with a good amount to continue. I love this over um, using ink pads because and thank you Joe from Joe's Jersey Journals for giving me the idea. She um, makes something similar and that's what gave me the idea because I used to use ink pads um, for inking everything and man they just it's so hard to get the ink from them onto the dauber and it gets used up from the dauber so fast so I'd like do one side and bam now I gotta go grind on my ink pad to get more ink off of it and it just would take forever and kill my hands so now I'm just gonna ink the inside here uh, cough, basically coffee dyeing the paper after it's been printed. I have um, an inkjet so I cannot get the ink on this side because it will make the ink smear and run and it does not look good. But I have found that since this paper is so thick I can do this side and it's okay. But when I'm inking the edges I try to be careful and not get too much over the edge onto the picture. So we'll see how fast that was. I covered it so fast. All right, give me a second while I dry and clean. Okay, so now it is dried. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. This is going to be my front. It's going to be upside down according to the numbers, but I like these hands to be on the front cover, not the back. And I feel like that the numbers being upside down just kind of adds more to the grunge. Um, so the next step is going to be making the uh, little button. So I'm going to pick a letter off of here. I've got a little circle hole punch. It doesn't tell me what size this is. And as you can see here, it's not the perfect size, but um, it's okay. You get I still get the whole letter. I think this is um, a one inch punch. So, as you can see, I did not punch the circle in its perfection, but I still got a perfect result for what's going to be showing up here. And I really wouldn't want it to be any bigger than this anyways for a little booklet. Alright, so that's where these come into play now. This is just one piece of paper. I need it to be thicker and sturdier. So I use my scraps and I cut extra circles out three extra circles and then I glue them all together and still do not get rid of this because there are still fun things we can do with that all right so now I need my glue and I just put some glue on gotta get the glue bottle cleaned out
make sure you get it over to the edges. And then I just pop the next circle on and repeat. One more time. Okay. Now I have formed the button. I'm going to do a little bit of inking to it to get rid of the white edges. I don't know if the back can ever be seen, but I do it just in case. All right, now I need to pop a hole through this. Let it dry out a bit. Try to find the center. Pop a hole through this. I don't want to cover the hands because I think the hands are like right here is about center, but I don't want to cover the hands. So I go right above. And I'm using this as a guide of where I want it to be before I pop, punch the hole through. And that'll do it. Now I'm going to take a brad. I like this copper color. And I'm just going to stick that through the button and through the booklet. Now on the inside of the booklet, we've gonna we're gonna fold this down. And then I have um, masking tape that I use to cover the fasteners. Because the reason why you wanna do this is because we're gonna be putting a pocket right here. And when you stick stuff in and out, it's going to be bumping onto the fasteners otherwise, and that would be annoying. Now with the tape, the, whatever we stick in that pocket will just glide right over it. Alright, so that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and make my front cluster. I've got all these scraps off to the side here, so basically I just take some scraps. I, don't try, I try hard not to think too much about it. I am a perfectionist, and if I give myself time to think about it, it's probably not going to look so great, and it's going to end up taking so much time. So I just kind of grab ink and lay stuff down and see if it looks good. And sometimes when I'm gluing, it'll get changed up a little bit, but it still usually looks good. Grunge, I feel like grunge is not really that hard to pull off. Just, you want messy and torn and shredded and layering looks great with grunge. And I think I'm going to go like that. We've got a word. I love words. They add a lot to a cluster. Or like you could just use a butterfly or some kind of picture like that. And that just finishes. That completes the look of the cluster. The only other thing I want to add, remember the circle paper? This is why we're keeping this. I like to add the coffee mix to it. And... This is a great background piece to a cluster now. A lot, it adds dimension and uh, it adds stuff, but I don't know the words for it. So, <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and take my time gluing this. Okay, now that cluster is made. See how easy that was? All right, I did end up adding one more piece you did not see. I added uh, this little notebook um, spiral paper, like the part of the notebook paper that's connected to the spiral. Um, those are fun. So the next step now is I'm going to use the map from the National Ge Geographic magazine. And it's just a book page I tore out, and it's like the perfect size, as you can see here and here. And then when I tear it down the middle, it'll be just enough to cover each side for a pocket. So I will go ahead and start tearing. Don't aim for perfect when you're doing grunge. But at the same time, you don't want it to be a piece of crap. <laughs> I, my problem is, is and one of the reasons why I love grunge so much, is I'm such a perfectionist. Ah, that was too much. Let's see, that was the piece of crap. Alright, I'm just such a perfectionist in my life, and when I first discovered junk journaling, I was trying to make everything so perfect, and it was so tedious. And um, once I discovered grunge, I and mixed media, I feel like those two go hand in hand. I went crazy and I let myself loose and wow, it was just so freeing and so much fun and I haven't gone back since. So this I'm going to go ahead and coffee dye with my solution. I just rub it on nice and fast. Make sure you get those edges. Also, like I said, some of this will be sticking out, so you're going to want to get these edges as well. And now I'm going to pause you again to dry. Okay, now I'm going to figure out which way it wants us to go and rip it. Try to make it a messy rip. Don't want a clean straight line. Even when it's ripped, a clean line kind of bothers me. I take some out of the center because the pockets are still just a little bit too big for a booklet. I'm going to actually maybe take some off the back of this one to help make up for that corner being ripped off. Now I've got to ink the edges, the ripped edges, real quick. ready to go down. Oh wait, I missed some. Okay. So that's going to go right there. Let me double check, make sure I got the back inked. Yep, that looks great. And this one still needs inked. So if any of you guys watched my last tutorial about the dyeing the fabrics and the seam binding, let me know if you um, attempted to make any yourself. I just checked my results today. As I told you, you're supposed to take it out of the bag, um, dry it a little bit, and re-scrunch it to give it more cr crinkles. And wow, okay, so after when I was not on camera, I did a lot more colors, and it's gonna be, it's gonna make some amazing tassels. Those colors are amazing, and they were so easy to make. So, just let me know if any, any of you actually attempted to make anything, and uh, what colors did you do? So, 
So I'm just doing a U with the glue to make this a pocket. And try to get that on there so that it hangs off on all of the sides. Okay, that looks good. Same thing with this side. This one's going to be a bit more trickier though because of that ripped off corner. It'll still be a good useful pocket. It just means I have to be more careful with my pocket placement. That'll be good. All right, that looks good. Okay, next step is to sew in a signature. And then after we sew in the signature, I can do the muslin across the spine. And that'll be it for the cover. So that's all we can do for this for now. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside and get to work on the pages. I already did a bunch of prep work. Oh, and by the way, the stuff that gets ripped off, add it to your scrap pile. We're going to want those for decorating the inside. Okay, so I already did um, some work on the pages before starting this. I just coffee dyed, um, and then I put it in the oven to cook it. As you can see, it's got some nice dark cooked edges. And then afterwards, I took some of this and splashed it on. I've used a paintbrush and splattered, and with that I get these nice little splatters across the pages. Um, and then I use the dauber, and I fill it all the way up, and I slam it down, and that gives this spread out look. Um, I do use a child's cup sometimes to make the big coffee cup looking rings. So, as you can see here, there's a little ring there. Um, and so, yeah, that's, what, that's what's been done beforehand. And this might be too many pages for a booklet. This might be too, make it too fat. We'll see. I'll just fold them all and see. So, I've got these little small pages uh, that are like a probably 5x7 notebook. I like these to do sideways. Um, because it adds different heights of the pages, and I like I like the variety of it. Um, and what I do is when I fold, I fold crooked. That's how I get this look, where you can see different pages here and there. Um, at the top two, the top and the bottom. Not these little booklets quite so much, but my bigger journals that I make, it really adds a very nice effect. So, and I try to alternate. So this one I folded down. This one I'm going to fold up. And I'm, I just try to do each one, one down. And then one up. one down and one up so when I'm building my signature I try to alternate using up and down because it makes the pages stick out and it won't matter so much for these little pages but it makes them stick out in different directions as you can see now I can see this it's giving us this layered effect here because this one went up and this one went down. Alright, so there is my signature. Now you'll notice this is way too big for the booklet cover and that is where I'm going to tear. I want some of it sticking out and I want some of it to be unseen and it's just going to mostly just let it tear where it wants to tear 
I don't want it sticking out so much so though that the string is going to curl it when you're tying it around the book. So um, I'll just do the main main tearing and then later on I might have to do some fine tune tearing. Now, I don't use any special tearing rulers or anything because oh I hate the look that those give. It's such a uniform look. I I ended up buying some because I was like oh that might make my job easier, and then that ended up being a waste of money because I really hate the way it looks. It needs to look trashy. <laughs> I asked my husband, I'm done with a journal. What do you think of it? He's like it looks trashy because it's called a junk journal. I'm like, perfect. That's how I know he's complimenting it. <laughs> Alright, so. Love the way those are sticking out. That looks great. Probably going to do a little inking on some of them. On the edges here. So they're not so clean and white. I don't do too much uh, ink too hard on the edges because it is a liquid and it does absorb and travel inwards into the paper. Um, so I try to make it just a touch. I try to. Doesn't mean I do. Alright. That's done. It's looking grungy and beautiful. All right, now I gotta choose. I'm gonna be sewing this into the signature. I'm going to get some clips. Sorry about that. And that's going to help keep those pages lined up once I make the holes so that when I'm ready to sew, which I'll go ahead and get that stuff ready. Alright, so I'm just going to use a big fat needle. That's my biggest one. This is, this is from a book binding kit. It came with these needles. Um, so I'm just using the fattest needle the book binding kit came with. I don't know any other information outside of that. And then I just have this um, papery feeling string. It's not paper, but uh, I don't know what it's called. Um, but it's nice and loose, and I like that for the dangles. Usually I use a wax thread when I'm making journals, but for a booklet, it doesn't need to be uh, quite so strong. Alright, so that's ready to sew. And now I'll go ahead and make my holes. I do not measure, I just eyeball. Try to find the center, and then... Um, so about there's the center, and I push the book as flat as I can right here at the edge, and pop the awl through it. This is an awl. And then from the center I go up, try to stop about an inch from the top, inch and a half, repeat. And then same thing at the bottom, about an inch and a half from the bottom, and go through. I do a three hole pamphlet stitch. I have yet to try any other stitch. This one just works perfectly, so why change it? So I'm just going from the inside middle hole the outside. Try to leave some of that in there. Then I go to the top hole. And that's coming through. And then most people go through the middle, back out, and, and down, and back in. Um, I'm, I like to go down all the way and create this nice solid line on the outside, or on the middle I mean, and then I go back in the middle, and there we 
go. Now you just gotta have one string on each side of this and then pull up and down from to the top and to the bottom to tighten and then make sure this string is in between them and that way when you tie it ties onto that string when I'm cutting my string I'm, I do about three lengths of the booklet or the journal or whatever I'm making that way I know I have enough overhang for when I make a tassel or not a tassel, the dangles alright so that's all sewn in there look how great that's looking and now I'm going to do uh, the muslin on the outside what did I do with that? oh it's right here uh, actually my the first one I made was made with muslin and then the one I just showed you was actually made out of the flower sack towel so this one's going to be flower sack towel as well say that three times fast flower sack towel all right now I grunge that up a bit shred um, fray I like my fabrics frayed. Adds to the grunge look. Okay. Now I'm just going to take some glue. Just glue one side about a half an inch in or however much your fabric needs and pop that down I don't know why this fabric is kind of crooked Alright, now I glue the other side. Okay, now the cover's done, uh, with the exception of the tie. So now I'm going to take some of this and put it around, double knot that. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I can't see the camera when I'm sitting down. So I just put it around the button so that it's actually being tied onto the brad. And cut off the excess so you don't see it now this is where you get to decide how long you want your length I like to do this crazy wrap And then go around the circle a couple times and cut enough to add a tie a charm on. I have this charm right here. This is like a palm leaf or something, but it could also look like a really big feather. And double knot that. Okay. 
Okay, that's the outside with the exception of the dangles. Which I guess we can go ahead and make that now too. Let me get my stuff together. Alright, so for this I'm going to be making paper beads. So I just take some scraps of coffee dyed paper and ink the edges. I don't want it too wet because I'm about to be rolling and gluing. Pick which side you like the best. With coffee dyed papers, there's usually one side darker than the other, and I want the beads to be a little bit different, so I'm doing one light side and one dark side. And the hardest part is getting this started. I'm going to pull you guys in a little closer. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to be using just something round, um, like a needle, uh, to help get it going, to roll it around. It's a lot of fumbling at the beginning, but then once you get it going, you get it going. So that is started. particularly like making paper beads but they look really cool so I do it all right it's a little bit um, bigger of a hole than I was wanting but it should still work Now I'm going to make one more. I'll do it off camera so I don't waste your time. Okay, so I went ahead and made my paper beads. I've got, I put double knots at the base of these strings so that the beads will not go upwards. And now I'm going to put them on. These wooden beads are kind of crappy, so I need to use my awl to help open up the holes a bit. If you're doing this, make sure you don't push the bead too far. You'll end up splitting it. So I just put one wooden bead on And then one of my paper beads. And another wooden bead. And then double knot. Which I will do that off camera. So once again, wooden bead, paper bead, and a wooden bead. Eh. All right. So I'll go ahead and tie those. Okay, so um, they are done now. Well, I gotta cut that extra string off. But as you'll see here, I tied one a little lower than the other. I like them to hang at different lengths to help accentuate their style and grunginess. <clears throat> and 
now that's the outside of the book it is done now time to decorate the inside this is where we're just going to be doing some a bunch of grungy stamping and making some clusters and maybe making a pocket or a tuck spot Actually, let me get cleaned up here a bit. All right, so before you do any pockets, tucks, or clusters, you're gonna want to do the grungy stamping. I have this bucket of just stamps that I use when I'm doing grungy stamping. It's kind of a mess, but when I am doing grunge work, I have fun crazy music going on in the background, I'm drinking a glass of wine, and I'm just letting myself free and go to town. So I don't keep them perfectly nice in the box, just as long as they're all within one space so I know where they are is the main thing that matters. I like to use a nice sharp brown, so I do not use Distress Oxide Brown because brown, Distress Oxide Brown any of the browns on the coffee dyed pages don't show up very well. So I use the Archival Ink Brown, which is a nice crisp brown. And then when it comes to black, I don't want that crisp. So I do use the Distress Oxide Black Soot. And I've got a mirrored uh, definition of imagination. And I'll just stamp a little part of that and push a little bit and just go crazy. Flip to some pages and do something. Do a little bit here and there. And then ink a different part. And sometimes flip it upside down. Use it sideways. I'll just put it on a few pages. And then I clean the stamp off on the page and once it's not really putting out much more ink I move on to the next stamp. So this is just some really pretty script. This one I might end up doing in black. I do, I like to have a nice mix of brown and black on the pages. Good. This one I have is just like, I, I don't know if that's supposed to be like dates or what, but they're backwards numbers. And I like the way that they just look like they were typed up. So I put a few here and there. I try not to let the stamps be too dark because these these booklets are meant to be written in so I do keep it pretty light and if there are dark spots they're usually off to the sides but my pen will be able to write over any of these stamps easily my just a normal black pen all right I've got this one here these are Tim Holtz I think yeah Tim Holtz stamps he makes some good grungy stuff. This is my favorite one. It's just a script stamp. Um, it's a clean one. And I just 
get different parts of it and then put a little here and a little there. I love how you can just get that tiny little blip of this stamp on there. This one I tend to use a lot of because I can get different parts of the stamp since it's a nice big one. And then when you change it in different directions, that helps mix it up too. I just love the look of a script stamp as background on my pages. Clean this stamp off. Um, I've got lots and just a really big variety of stuff in here. I'll maybe use this one a couple of times. Use this one once. Uh, one, another one of my favorite stamps is this one right here. This crazy pattern. You can do a lot of fun things with that. Kind of run out of space though. That might just be about it. There is one more I like to use. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've got these that are kind of just like messy ink stains or something. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day on the stamping. Now we're going to make some clusters. Or as Joe from Joe's Jersey Journals likes to call them now, Sniffits. <laughs> I think Sniffits is way more fun. Alright, so I'm just going to do like two or three and then... I will do pull from my stash of vintage photos and make a tuck spot or pocket. These are nice. That one has no year, but you can tell these are really old. I love the way that the vintage photos feel. They're always different and they just add different um, textures and elements to my projects. Kind of like doing one right there on the front page. I'm going to make this one an actual pocket. Difference between a tuck and a pocket. A pocket is a U-shaped glue and a tuck is an L. So 
I'll go ahead and make this one a pocket right here. Let me clear this stuff out so I can work a little higher up. Not be such just at the bottom of the camera. All right, and then go a few pages over so they aren't all together. And I'll put this one right here and make it a tuck. Norwich Cathedral S S I don't know what that that last letter is. Maybe an L. All right. Okay. Now just making some clusters. Let me see if I can get you closer. Will I still be able to be in frame? No, probably not. Let me try to just move the camera. This is probably so crazy for you guys right now. Ugh. I don't know if I made it any better. Okay, so I've got all these scraps over here. Oh, and I've also got, I love doing rusted paper clips, so I've got a couple of those. I'll just put those on a random page. put some ephemera in the pockets so let's go ahead and fill that up Some clusters. I think I need to get some more cheesecloth. I don't have any over here. One thing that's fun to do is to use these little papers with the holes as like a stamp and then you just go over it pull it off and then now you've got that fun design coffee stained onto your paper this is um, I think it's coffee dyed it's either coffee dyed tissue paper or tracing paper. So little scraps of that are great. This is the flower sack towel. We've got the leftovers of the map. I am literally just grabbing stuff and just making sure it's just different elements and throwing it together. And that's how I make my clusters or sniffets, whichever way you like to call it. I like a little black in there. That 
it's looking good. I feel like it just needs a little focal point. Um, give me a minute. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed this little dog paw print charm and glued the whole thing together. Um, I'm making this booklet for a friend of mine who loves dogs, so I'm sure she'll love the little paw print. Now let's make another cluster, maybe right here. Um, actually, let me go get some cheesecloth real quick. Never mind. I actually had some right next to me and didn't see it. So, now I can add this fun stuff. I love cheesecloth. It can get so grungy. So easily. love adding fabric to my clusters, but um, what makes cheesecloth the best is that it's such a thin fabric, so it doesn't bulk up the journal. I don't like to make bulky clusters, so I try to keep it pretty, pretty basic. But I like to add as many different types of um, feels and textures and looks as possible. this paper clip somewhere else because that's gonna have taken up that space. I think I'm gonna use my real inker. I want some dark lines in here so I'm going to use the ground espresso. I'm just working until I get the feel for this one. I haven't felt that it's right yet, so that's why it's not glued down. Kind of liking that one. Let's see what rusted stuff I've got in here. These little rusted spirals. I tore apart a spiral notebook, a watercoloring book, and cut the spirals and added them to my rust solution and thought that they'd be fun to add as cluster elements. So, let me go ahead and glue that. And the glue is still drying, but you can go ahead and see how that came out. It'll look better once the white glue is gone. And now I'm going to make one more. I think I'll do it like right here. from those printed pages maybe. When I tear, I pull up on the piece that I don't want. That way it leaves this nice white mark on the piece I do want. 
and then I ink that and it shows the white makes the ink show up so well. This stuff that adds a nice extra texture and element to it. And I don't know, maybe do another one of these. together. Alright, so now all I need to do is pop this paper clip back on. And there. There's that cluster. And we've got this pocket here. Use the pages. Well, I'll just start from the beginning. So, this is the book we just made together. Um, you guys will have to let me know if you tried this out and uh, made one for yourselves. They're so easy to make and just so much fun. And I love having little booklets to put into a journal um, because you can take them out and you don't have to, and you can carry them with you and write in them. But you don't have to take your big old journal places. Uh, if you're anything like me, your journal's big. <laughs> so we've got our picture here. That's a nice pocket. Beautiful grungy pages, rusted paper clip. We've got this cluster here. And then we've got the tassel or the dangles. We've got this um, cluster here. Still drying, so I gotta make sure those pages stay open for a little while longer. And then we've got this tuck spot here, and another rest of paper clip, and our last cluster. Alright, there she is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys learned something from this that you can use for yourselves. That's the reason why I do this. And I just, I love junk journals so much that I just want to share with the world how to make stuff. So grungy and good. Colors come out more blue than it is. This is a really rich brown in person. That's a little better. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye.